Hey, Algebra 2. We are in Chapter 6, Section 3 um, in the warm-up. Okay, um, simplify the expression. Um, I'm not going to simplify it in any way other than grab my calculator and type in things like 93 minus 97 in parentheses, divide by 1.5. Um, and I get negative 2.67. Okay, you just have to put these in parentheses before you divide. That's not a very good division. Okay, so 20 minus 18 divide by 0.8 is how you would type it in. And here you get an answer of 2.5. Here, um, you can do the multiplication first and then add, or you can do the addition and then multiply doesn't matter you're gonna get the same answer and the answer is actually going to be 0.95 um, 68% of sample cars tested got between 27 and 32 miles per gallon of gasoline what percent of cars tested got less than 27 miles per gallon or more than 32 miles per gallon so if we have between 27 and 32 miles per gallon 68% Okay, everything less than 27 or greater than 32 is going to be the remaining percent. So 100 minus 68 equals 32% for the remaining. All right. You've studied probability distributions. One type of probability distribution is called a normal distribution. It's our vocabulary word. A normal distribution is modeled by a bell-shaped curve called a normal curve that is symmetric about the mean. And if you remember, the mean is the average. Um, so a normal curve, we can actually analyze the area under a normal curve and use it in our statistics studies. Um, normal distribution with mean x bar, our calculator will actually spit this out for us if we want it to, but it is the symbol for mean and a standard deviation of sigma has the following properties. So the total area under the related normal curve is 1. So this whole curve, if I shaded all the area and I were able to calculate the area, the area underneath it is 1. About 68% of the area lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So there's the mean. One standard deviation to the left and to the right gives me a shaded area that shades 68% of the total data is in that shaded area. 95% of the area lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So the mean is still here. And I go two this way, two standard deviations that way, and I would shade this part of the curve. So 95% of the data falls within that shaded area. And then 99.7% of the area lies within three standard deviations of the mean. So I still have the mean, and I go three, to the left and to the right, and I'd shade that part of the curve, and that is most of the data was in, should be within three standard deviations of the mean in that shaded area. You can look here, it's broken up a little bit different. I have 34% of the data, 34, because you add those together, you get 68. Another 13.5 and 13.5, another little itty bitty bit, and then a little itty bitty bit more. So that is your mean plus one standard deviation, plus two, two standard deviations, plus three standard deviations. Minus one, minus two, minus three. So a normal distribution has a mean x bar and a standard deviation sigma. For a randomly selected x value from the distribution, find two standard deviations to the left of x between that and the mean. So this right here is your mean. We want to find two standard deviations to the left. 
that's why we're going to look at our mean and then one, two standard deviations to the left. The probability that a randomly selected x value lies between x bar minus two, two sigma and x bar is the shaded area under the normal curve. So we have 0.34 plus 1, 0.135. Right there, that's the probability that the data is going to lie within those two shaded areas. So our next example, the blood cholesterol readings for a group of women are normally distributed, distributed with a mean of 172 and a standard deviation of 14. About what percent of the women have readings between 158 and 186? So if we know that the standard deviation is normal and I have a mean of 172, if I add 14, I get 186. And if I subtract 14, I get 158. So 158 and 186 are within one standard deviation of the mean, which means um, I have 68% of the women are in this shaded part. Because we know that one standard deviation above and below the mean is 68% of the total area of the normal curve. Readings less than 158 are considered desirable. About what percent of the readings are undesirable? everything else. So if we look, 158, this would be 68 plus, let me go back to that chart <clears throat> that we put in our notes. I just copied it over. What we're looking for is the addition of all of these percentages. Okay, this right here is desirable. Everything else is not. So we would really like 13.5% plus 2.35% plus 0.15%. And that gives us 16% of the readings are actually, actually desirable. All right, let's practice a few. Um, a normal distribution has a mean x bar and a standard deviation sigma. Find the indicated probability for a randomly selected x value from the distribution. Okay, something less than x bar. Okay, there is our x bar. So it would be everything else. If we added it, 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15, we should get half, and we do, we get 0.5, okay, adding all of those pieces and parts together, okay, that's the area, this is normally distributed, um, that means it's symmetric, that means it's going to be half, how about x is greater than x bar, well, it's going to be um, the other half, which is also going to be 0.5. Okay, let's make it a little harder. How about x is greater than x bar and less than x bar plus two sigma? So there's x bar and there is x bar plus two sigma. So we're gonna add 0.34 plus 0.135. 0.475 is our probability. How about between x bar minus sigma and x bar? 0.34. How about between, or no, x is just less than x bar minus 3 sigma x bar minus 3 sigma is here, x is less than, so it would be point, It's 0.15 percent, so we want to actually move that decimal to to get the right answer. 
still going. Um, x is greater than x bar plus sigma. So it would be all of those. 0.135 plus 0 0.0235 plus 0 0.0015. we get 0.16. What if, in example 2, what percent of the women have readings between 172 and 200? If you go back to example 2, I'm looking at it, we have the mean is 172 and the standard deviation is 14. So we know 172 x plus sigma is 186, sorry, x plus 2 sigma is 200. Let me fix, this actually should be x bar. So we're looking for readings between 172 and 200. So 172, 1 sigma, 2 sigma. So we're looking for there to there. So the percentage is going to be 0 0.34 plus 0 0.135 or 0 0.75, which is 47.5% if I actually read the problem and it says what percent. All right, moving on. Um, a standard normal distribution. The standard, nor standard normal distribution is the normal distribution with a mean zero and a standard deviation of one. The formula below can be used to transform x values from normal distribution with a mean x bar and standard deviation sigma into z values having a standard normal distribution. So we're calculating what are called z values. And we have a formula here to do it. So we have x minus x bar over sigma. So we're going to subtract the mean from the given x value and then divide by the standard deviation. This gives us a z-score, so the z-value for a particular x-value is called the z-score for the x-value, and is the number of standard deviations the x-value lives above or below the mean. Say that again. The z-score for a given x-value is the number of standard deviations the x-value lies above or below the mean. If you remember, we had mean. The z value um, for a particular x value is the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. Okay? Let's practice. So our standard normal table. Um, if z is a randomly selected value from a standard normal distribution, you can use the table below to find the probability that z is less than or equal to some given value. For example, the table shows that the probability that z is less than or equal to 0.4, sorry, less than or equal to negative 0.4 is 0.3446. Okay, so we got negative 0.4. Follow it down, follow it over, we have 0.3446. You can find the value of P, the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 0.4 in the table by finding the value where the row negative 0 and common, sorry, the row negative 0 and column 0.4 intersect. You can also use the standard normal table to find probabilities for any normal distribution by first converting the table, sorry, by first converting values from the distribution to Z scores which we can do with that formula. Let's try one. Scientists conducted aerial surveys of a seal sanctuary and recorded the number of the number x of seals they observed during each survey. 
the numbers of seals observed were normally distributed with a mean of 73 seals and a standard deviation of 14.1 seals. Find the probability that at most 50 seals were observed during a survey. So first we want to find the z-score and that's x minus x bar over sigma. So 50 seals, that's our x value, x bar is 73 and sigma is 14.1. That gives us negative 1.6. And then we're going to use the table to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 50, which is approximately where z is less than or equal to negative 1.6. So here's what we're looking for. The probability that x is less than or equal to 50 is approximately equal to the probability where the z-score is less than or equal to negative 1.6. So we're negative 1.6, they intersect at um, 0.0548. So that is the probability that the z-score is less than or equal to negative 1.6. So the probability that at most 50 seals were observed during a survey is 0 0.548. Okay, let's try another one. For, um, what if in example three, find the probability that at most 90 seals were observed? So we're gonna calculate our z-score again. We have 90 minus 73 over 14.1. gives us approximately 1.21. 1. 1.2 is what we're going to find in the table. So look back at your table. We're looking for positive 1.2. 0 0.8849 is going to be our answer on this one. That's our probability. Explain why it makes sense that the probability that the z-score is less than or equal to zero is 0.5. Well, the standard normal distribution, if you remember when we first learned about it, that right there was a graph we saw in one of the beginning definitions. And it's symmetric, okay? So this would be half, 50% or 0.5, and this would be half, or 50% or 0.5. Daily homework quiz, okay, great extra practice. That's all I have. Nice work today.